Hey guys, it's Will. Hopefully you're having a great day today. So in this video, I want to share with you guys the difference between jingles and selling your music to a business and selling your music to the consumer, the everyday listener, the person that's listening on your streaming platforms or your social media platforms. What's the difference between the two? Which one's best for you as a producer, an artist, or a label? In this one, we're going to break it down. And before we do, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Will. I've worked in both of these two different markets. I've sold a song to Invisalign uh, for five figures, so business to business. And I've also gone direct to consumer selling music, not only online using things like Shopify stores, BeatStars, but also in the form of NFTs on the blockchain. So when it comes down to determining if you wanna go jingles or for consumers, this is something that you might wanna realize first is that ultimately your music is a product. Um, it's kind of like you've been brainwashed a little bit if you believe that streaming is the way. And it's not your fault, there's literally hundreds of people on YouTube that are sharing with you, get more streams, get more streams. And there's nothing wrong with getting streams. There's nothing wrong with getting more eyeballs. But uh, I kind of see it as like having someone determine the value of your music, which is Spotify. And maybe you get a little bit of value, tiny bit of value for the listener um, versus you put your art in a gallery, right? It's art. You determine the value of it. You can sell the art. You can monetize it more. And you can have alternative methods for profiting from your music. And so you can go with streaming. To me, it's quite disheartening to post uh, on streaming. If you're getting, let's say, a million streams per month, your perspective could be different, right? You're maybe getting a couple thousand dollars every month with that. But uh, if you're under a million and you're, it's, it's hard to sustain a living, okay? Unless you pursue these alternative ways of marketing and selling your music. And so uh, when you're trying to make money from the music or build that community, uh, determining kind of which direction you wanna go, commercial or uh, consumer can really help you out because I think uh, the consumer side of things, in my experience, it takes longer to build. It is the one to many platform, so a lot of people. And usually, you're not going to sell the music for a high price. It's normally going to be a low price, a low value, but a higher volume when you're going one to many people. Unless you have select few collectors that really want to support your career but let's say you're selling a subscription for the music going consumer, you might, let's say you get 10 bucks a month for exclusive content you're giving them, access to merch, or it's also doubles as a concert ticket, and it's $10 a month. It's still lower value, just 10 bucks a month. But you know, if you get 100 people, that's, or you get 1,000 people, that's between $1,000 and $10,000 per month for a subscription. If you're selling copies of music, you know, uh, producer and you're creating uh, sample packs or just creating exclusive releases of music that hasn't been released anymore, selling each copy for $20 or $30 in that way, or m maybe more, uh, then, you know, it's, it's about the same leverage. It's usually going to be lower volume unless you, in that consumer area, go, let's say, NFTs and you create like something really valuable and you uh, value pack the unlockable content and people want it as a collectible. They're thinking about you as someone that is a community, a career, a brand, that if they sell that in the future, they could sell it for more than what they bought it for because they found you early in your career. So that's like one way of the consumer uh, way of selling music. So those are all great ways and we cover how to systemize those things. Because you know the first thing in, in doing that is knowing you can't just contact people on Spotify. You don't have their first name, you don't have their email. Uh, you don't really know who they are. You know maybe where they are, but your streaming doesn't give you a lot of info. So the first step in selling that consumer offer, and this is one of the perks, is that you now get their contact info. 
I like to offer the direct consumer uh, unreleased music. Pre-save campaigns. A lot of people say, well, I don't really like pre-save campaigns. It just kind of helps with my Spotify, but not anything else. It does help to build your email list. And building your email list, uh, the rule is for every subscriber on your email list, you should make at least a dollar a month. So the more you grow it, you really should be, um, be being able to convert a portion of that audience. But it's great to go direct to consumer in that way and not just rely on streaming. And so there's systems to build it out. Our virtual music selling system that I cover uh, and we're we just launched two weeks ago, we've covered how to do front end marketing, build your email list and the automation that comes with it. And for those of you that are interested in learning with me on a weekly basis, you'd like to get a part of the virtual music selling system, I would encourage you guys to check out that first link in the description. But the other side of the coin is selling your music, not consumer, but selling it to businesses. Now, once again, um, this is the opposites usually in value. So your value is going to be much higher, okay? And the volume, meaning the amount of people, it's not one to many, it's business to business. You're a producer, you are an artist, you're a singer songwriter, and you're going direct to a business to give them a song that you've written and produced. And in most cases, it's a, uh, a jingle, it's, it's a in favor of their brand and showcasing their brand. Some people say, I have to build a big audience to do this first. It's actually not true. Um, yes, you could see like Lil Yachty with sprites, or you, you know, you can see all these uh, Jesse Itzler with uh, the Knicks, right? But uh, you know, you can see people do that. But but for me, in my experience, um, it didn't really matter on you know how big I was or anything. I just made a song about the corporate company and then I proposed it to them. So I make like a Dutch Bros song. I don't know if you guys know, um, but Dutch Bros is like, it's like Starbucks, um, Invisalign, like Invisalign song, basically made a song that talks about all of the perks, how you can fit in with braceless faces. Uh, you can, um, there's a bunch of rhymes. I should I should post them somewhere, but basically it's like Invisalign makes you look so fine. Invisalign makes your smile shine. Invisalign, you're no longer confined. The most miraculous design, Invisalign. See, it's just showcasing the product. You can wear them everywhere. New set with no delay. You have popcorn. Please share. I saw changes each day. Reached my standard of living. They were never in the way. I had no problems kissing. <laughs> what can I say? See what I did there? I basically like made fun, played with the brand. I wrote these bars, recorded it in my bedroom, uh, in my studio, and then I sell and I sold it to them. That was a couple years ago. It was back in uh, 20, 2017, 2018. But you do this and you you create something for the brand. And I'm saying any brand association. It could be a sports club. It could be a restaurant. It could be um, you know, orthodontist in that case, or it could be a gym or a dentist. It can be any type of business. And if you notice they have good revenue, they have fairly uh, good engagement in their business, and uh, they could just use some, some marketing uh, flair and you could create a jingle. Now, in most cases, if you do this, you're going to sell direct to them with, a price of anywhere from a thousand dollars to if they're kind of like a whale client up to you know a hundred hundred thousand dollars and this is a, a marketing campaign for them and you create the song you do a music video with them if they want it charge more for the music video and um in my experience so if you wanted to go get ten thousand dollars right just an example uh, you'd have to get uh, multiple millions of streams every, or you just have to get millions of streams on Spotify. No marketing costs, no equi sweat equity or whatever you put into it, just millions of streams. That payout is what would be equal to one uh, good contract with a company that needs a jingle. 
And so that is uh, the premise uh, of, of doing business to business music. Now, there's another part, there's another way, this is the third way, is that you can actually go to a business as a producer or a singer songwriter and go to a business that has the target customer that you are. So let's say you built up, you know, a fairly good audience on your your singer songwriter channel and uh, your YouTube channel, your social media. Now you go over to me or we have a software. It's called TuneFlow. It helps artists organize their songs and write. Um, it's a it's a product of TuneFlow. And uh, that that software, we like to work with singers and songwriters, and we could pay you to do it. So you go to uh, the plugin uh, company that owns, for example, there's a bass plugin that you use in FL Studio or or um, Logic or anywhere. It's a, it's a plugin, and it's um, called Serum. It's like a, a synth basically, and that's plugin. They have subscriptions that people pay. Uh, they pay for it. They're million, millions of dollars per year they make, and they could, they would pay you as a producer to go use their product and share it with your audience. And uh, for example, like there's a company that I recently worked with. Uh, it's called Beat Library. Uh, they have a lot of royalty-free beats that are all. 100% um, owned by you. When you use them in your music, you own the songs. You don't have to pay publishing. You don't have to pay out. Uh, you get to use the beats and it's all for you. And they reached out to me because, hey, Will, you work with producers, artists, labels, different creators, YouTube channel owners, people like that. But can you make a, um, a bunch of videos about this? I said, yeah, sure. And it turns into a contract where then I go and I make them a bunch of content for their channel and help with their marketing. And, you know, you can do very well for yourself by um, by focusing on putting out that that content, build the community, you know, the monetization that comes in the long term of building your community could not only be business to business, it could not only be consumer, but it could also be from your music that you can work with other artists, uh, other music companies that have, uh, that are targeting artists. And if you're artists, if you're a producer and your fans are all um, artists, then they'll pay you very well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got some value out of it. Um, at the end of the day, guys, uh, one thing that you should note is that it's not always going to be easy. You're not always going to see the results right away. And what $10,000 here or, you know, $100,000 for a song, or I think we covered a while back, $200,000 selling music like an art gallery, right? Selling your music like an art where you price it, you create copies. These are all things that like when you do them, um, you know, it's, it's not always going to, it doesn't always work out perfectly. And and guess what? Maybe it's not that you want to make big, big, big checks. Maybe you would be happy with a lot less. And you kind of have to determine that with your own uh, self. How much money, you know, would be good? Is it an extra $500? Is it an extra um, $1,000 that you want to make every month? And if that's the case, you know, every five months, you can sell a jingle to a company or every release that you do you can go direct to consumer and sell it and the volume will make you that every month but you know deciding it is not that you don't have the ability to do it it's that you haven't decided what you want and the moment you decide what it is that you want and you go and you work consistently towards it you set that goal you're like in our virtual music selling system our community they were working in, I was just talking with a student today and they said, you know, I was getting ready to put my music on Spotify. And they said, if I wanted to do that, or I wanted to do that, but it felt kind of weird. And actually what I'd like to do is treat it more like I'm an artist in an art gallery. Like I want to sell my music and do it in a way that's 
that's effective, but like maintains the brand. And it's like valuable for people. We talked about unlockable content, giving people access to uh, merch for free if they purchase music or um, also setting up automation and email sequences. And if those are all things that you would like to integrate into your marketing and, and have alternative monetization methods, then I would encourage you guys check out that first link in the description. It's not a subscription or anything like that. It's our virtual music selling system. If you want to work with me on a close basis, get a one hour call with me as well as an hour call every single Thursday and work with other like-minded business owners, singer, songwriters, producers, and artists and labels. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if I earned your thumbs up, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.